Today, we're going to talk about rendering. Rendering, in my personal definition, is converting mesh and light data into images on a screen. This can be broken into two main categories, real-time rendering and offline rendering. Real-time rendering renders images ideally at 60 frames a second or more and attempts to make images as realistic as possible given the constraint of having to be in real time. This usually means that real-time rendering sacrifices realism for fast results and has to fake a lot of realistic lighting properties like global illumination, ambient occlusion, ambient lighting, and reflections. The most common use cases for real-time rendering are video games and other real-time simulations like flight simulators, real-time physics sims, and sometimes CAD software. The main talking point behind real-time rendering is this thing called global illumination. Global illumination can best be defined as the techniques used to create the illusion of realistic lighting while still operating in real time. To put it in layman's terms, real-time global illumination is the smoke and mirrors behind real-time rendering. Now, global illumination is kind of the wild west of graphics programming, as there's no real standardized technique for getting the most realistic results. If your results look good enough, your solution is good enough. To kind of show what I mean, here's a couple very popular software that all have completely different global illumination solutions that all get really, really good results. Software number one, Godel. Godel has their own in-house global illumination solution called Sine Distance Field Global Illumination. From what I can find online, the way this system works is it turns your scene into a voxel volume and then uses a technique called voxel ray marching to estimate the lighting of the scene. Now, voxel ray marching could be a video of its own, and I would be more than happy to make that if y'all be interested in it, so please let me know. Software number two, Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has a very popular in-house illumination system called Lumen. From what I could find, Lumen essentially uses a combination of software and hardware ray tracing to get extremely realistic lighting results in very, very large scenes. Lumen could be its own video, and I would be more than happy to make that if y'all would be interested. Software number three, Teardown. This is probably my favorite example, as it was made by one guy in OpenGL and uses a lot of very simple rendering techniques to get extremely good results. Teardown uses a mix of deferred rendering, voxel path tracing, and other common lighting techniques in a fragment shader to achieve extremely realistic lighting. There's other software that have their own novel solutions like Path of Exile, how they invented their own global illumination system called Radiance Cascades, and actually ended up writing a paper on it. These software are enough to kind of show that there really is no one right answer when it comes to global illumination. Now let's talk about the other field of rendering, offline rendering. Offline rendering does not care about the speed of rendering and only cares about the realism of your results. In the worst cases, this means it can take literal days to render a single frame. An example of this would be the black hole scene from Interstellar, where each frame took roughly 100 hours to render. Offline rendering usually uses a form of path tracing to accurately simulate light rays bouncing around a scene. And for those of you who don't know what path tracing is, here's a really quick overview. For each pixel on the screen, an invisible ray is cast into the scene. This ray bounces off objects in the scene until it reaches a light source or until it reaches a maximum number of bounces to prevent infinite loops. The pixel on the screen is then colored based on the surfaces the ray bounces off of and the light source it hits. Materials can be applied to different surfaces that change how the ray bounces, such as reflection, refraction, and other things. There are some other interesting ray tracing techniques that are very different from path tracing and can get real-time and offline results, like fixed step ray marching and regular ray marching, which could be another standalone video. In conclusion, real-time rendering is very fast but inaccurate and requires large amounts of smoke and mirrors to get good results. Offline rendering, on the other hand is very slow but produces the most realistic results which is important for fields like computer animation and CGI. If you want to learn graphics engineering, it's important to know how to do both offline and real-time rendering. They may sound very different, but the techniques and underlying programming concepts used are very similar across both, and if you're even remotely familiar with one of the disciplines, it's very easy to make a project in the other. To give an example, I was able to make a software ray tracer in a fragment shader in OpenGL, given mainly experience in real-time rendering for video games. It's extremely useful to be able to do both real-time and offline rendering in a professional capacity. So yeah, that's really it on real-time versus offline rendering. Please give me feedback on what you liked about this video, what you didn't like. Please let me know if there's any topics you'd like me to cover in the future. And uh, please subscribe. This did take a little bit to edit. Again.